Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at another constraint, and we'll use the limit rotation constraint. And this is a really valuable tool, say, for instance, maybe you're building a house, and maybe this is your door. And your door only can open, you know, a certain number of degrees. It can't spin around 360 degrees, right? So you might put some kind of constraint on it so it can only move a certain angle through a rotation. All right, so right now, let's go back global axis right here. I'm going to do a couple things in this lesson. First thing we'll do is we'll add a constraint. In fact, I'll make this, let's go into the constraint button, this little chain link looking thing, and go to limit rotation right in here. All right, and so really we can constrain it really along the X, Y, or Z axis. So we'll just do it on Z for the time being, like this. And it says zero to zero, let's make it zero to 45 would be the angle. So if I go up from above and I just try and rotate this on Z a little bit, I'll just press RZ, right? You, you can see that it's it's constrained between 0 and 45 degrees like this. All right, maybe I'll make it 60 degrees. All right, RZ and there it can go more like this. Okay? So that's that's a powerful way if you're building it a scene and you don't want it to go but the reason I'm addressing the lesson now is because suddenly these are become a lot more fun because of the new rigid body dynamics in 2.66 because you might have an animation where the door is hooked to the house and the wind is blowing the door open which is of course something that I do if you even see my tornado animations I do things like that but so you don't want the door to the wind to blow the door and have it just spinning all the way around your house you, you know it might you just constrain it with a constraint like this. We'll do a little animation, but one other thing, this door is very thin, right? So let's say I started with a plane and I wanted to make this a door. And this is already, if I bring up the tool menu, I've already added this as an active rigid body right here. And this is already passive rigid body. You can tell because it's got the green around it in this case. So if I press Alt A, you notice it's interesting, well we won't let that hit it yet, but we press Alt A and it just sits there nice and perfectly, f f you know, flat because there's no wind, no, nothing else pushing against it. So that's pretty stable. However, maybe I want to make this a thicker door, so I'll go into edit mode. I better go into local axis here real quick and I'm going to extrude it and say E and then that axis is, shows up as Z. It must have it rotated, so nope. X, Y, Y. Now, all right, I'll extrude it like this. All right, and now I have my new door. It's a little bit thicker. Let's get a light. Where's my light in the scene? Let's move that light over there a little bit back closer so we can at least see it. So, so now we have our door. Now, when I press Alt A, watch what happens. It falls over. All right, so. Well, maybe you don't want that to fall over, but and this you, you might run into time and time again, but it, it all comes down again to this little orange dot here. It's not at the center of the object. Well, it's because I extruded it like this. So a lot of times when you're doing these kind of extrusions and changing the geometry of your mesh, you always want to come back to object mode, come up to the object, transform that origin back to the geometry so it's sitting in the center. I can't tell you how fundamentally th important this is to a lot of my work. I mean, I use this all the time. I mean, it's that critical. All right, now let's press Alt-A. And there it does. It sits, sits flat. Okay, now let's see the other thing that's going on. This, if you notice from my other lessons on rigid body dynamics, I have a playlist now for rigid body dynamics for version 2.66. It has quite a few tutorials in it. And then in this case we're using the keyframed version. This is still a rigid body. You can tell because it has this green line around it. That doesn't always give you a clue. It's usually orange when it's selected. But also if this is part of a group, groups also are green. So that's a, that can be a little bit uh, tricky. But it is an active rigid rigid body and the other thing is I'd gone over here like from the other lesson and I pressed here this animated button I click that and that allows me to set a keyframe on here so it will interact with this like it does I press Alt A and it hits it but notice what's happening is the it's being constrained so I'm even when it hits it 
it can't move that far. See the way it twists it versus if I came back in here to the constraint button and I made this maybe 90 degrees. Let's see the difference in the animation. It actually spins it and lays it flat. Let me scale this up a little bit. You'll see it here. And it kind of lays it flat like that versus if I went back in and at 45 degrees ran the animation constrains it and you see the way it tilts it differently like that so every little thing has an effect and it's just it's a great tool to know about especially with the new rigid body dynamics and it'll give you a lot more flexibility in your uh, in your animations and things like that well that's it for this lesson and I'll see you in the next lesson